Mm. <sighs> Sorry. Hey guys, today we're gonna talk a little bit about Zentree and the newly launched 5000 series CPUs from AMD. AMD officially makes available four CPUs, the Ryzen 5 series which comprises of the 5600X, the Ryzen 7 series which comprises of the 5800X, and finally the Ryzen 9 which comprises of the 5900X and 5950X. AMD has made an amazing comeback with their Zen series of CPUs and has literally crushed Intel's domination in the CPU market. Innovative chiplet design and outsourcing of silicon allowed them to leapfrog ahead of the incumbent performance and deliver outstanding value across all segments, desktop, mobile and servers. With previous generation Zen 2, you know, your 3000 series CPUs, they already had next gen features like PCIe Gen 4 and high core count parts at prices not seen before making them an extremely competitive alternative to Intel's stable of chips. However, while AMD had core count and price advantage, they never really did take the gaming crown. Intel's single core speeds could easily break 5GHz out of the box, something that AMD could never do, and the Intel 10900K, 10700K and 10600K were still the CPUs to pick if gaming was your only use case. We're going to cover three things in this video. Number one, we're going to cover some of the new features of Zentry and what makes it so special. Number two, we're going to be putting the AMD 5950X through our test bench to see how it performs across gaming and synthetics, and more importantly, compare it against the current king of gaming CPUs, the Intel 10900K. And finally, we're going to give you the lowdown. Who is this CPU for? And is this the right CPU for you? If those are the questions you have about Zentree, continue watching to find out more. Let's get started. Superficially, Zentree could be mistakenly seen as an evolutionary to Zen 2 rather than revolutionary. Aside from the name change to 5000, and we think AMD is skipping 4000 to unify the APU and CPU lineup going forward, the core counts and TDPs remain relatively similar to Zen 2. For example, number one, the I.O. die is the same as the previous generation. Number two, it still has 24 lanes of PCIe 4 support. Number three, the PCIe lanes for NVMe or SATA allocations are still the same. And lastly, these processors are still using the same 7 nanometer uh, process node found in the 3000 series CPUs. Now what's revolutionary is really under the hood. For me to better explain this, let me sketch it out for you. Sketch, 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 sketch. First up, I'm drawing the chiplet design of Zen 2. It comes in a 4-core complex, which is these four boxes attached to a shared L3 cache of 16 megabytes. In an 8-core chip, you simply add two of these complexes to get your desired core count. So in this case, if I were to sketch out an 8-core 3700X, the cores would look like this. And this unique and innovative design was key in improving yield and increasing core scalability. It had its fair share of downsides. When cores had to access data or talk to another core from another complex, it had to do so via the Infinity fabric. This added latency to the performance and hence AMD couldn't really compete on IPC and absolute gaming performance. In Zen 3, however, AMD has combined two four-core structures into a single eight-core structure. This means each of these cores are directly connected to each other without having to get on the Infinity fabric. All eight cores have access to a huge 32 megabytes of L3 cache inside a chiplet and hence the latency for each core is greatly improved. Due to the increase in L3 cache and the reduced cache latency, there is now less core-to-core -core communication that's required to go off the chiplet. The larger L3 cache also allows more data to be stored before main memory is accessed, further improving latency. This combined cache and 8-core complex architecture provides lower latency, which is one of the main drivers for improving gaming performance in Zen 3. The whole launch is about gaming with AMD's catchphrase for the 5000 series as where gaming begins, and AMD is marketing a 19% average IPC uplift across games and applications, but we'll check those claims later in the video. The CPU we're introducing today and the one we have on hand is the 5950X, so a big shout out to AMD for getting us an early sample. The 5950X is a 16 core and 32 thread monster with a boost clock of 4.9 GHz at stock settings. It has 72 MB of L2 and L3 cache and only sips 105 watts of power. The craziest part about this is that the TDP is still kept at 105 watts, similar to the 3950X before it. And if AMD is touting a 19% IPC improvement at the same power efficiency, that's revolutionary indeed. During the launch event, the 5950X is shown to have up to 27% improvement over the previous gen's 3950X in content creation and up to 29% improvement in gaming. Compared to the 10900K, the 5950X has up to a whopping 59% improvement in content creation and up to 11% in gaming performance. Let's head over to the test bench to verify these claims. 
For the AMD system, we'll be using the awesome MSI X570 Ace motherboard with the 5950X at stock clocks. We have 32GB of ultra-fast 4000MHz Patriot Blackout memory, which are designed specifically for Ryzen systems. And our GPU of choice is the MSI RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio. For the Intel system, we'll be using the MSI Z490 Ace motherboard with the 10900K at stock clocks as well. We have 32GB of ultra-fast 4000MHz Patriot Blackout memory, and the MSI RTX 3090 Gaming X Trio will be our GPU of choice. So before we start, there's some caveats here. Ryzen Master did not work with the 5950X, so any overclocking was done in BIOS. We also noticed several anomalies from our testing, with temperatures of the 5950X exceptionally low in benchmarks like Cinebench and Prime95, and the CPU voltages on load were sub 1.1 volts, which is highly unusual in a high-end CPU like this. Nonetheless, the 5950X still outperformed across most benchmarks, and perhaps even more performance can be squeezed out of the CPU when the official drivers are released. Let's go to the results. Results, 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 results. First up, we have our suite of games to see how much better Zen 3 has improved single clock speeds against Intel. We're only benching at 1080p to see true CPU performance with no GPU bottlenecks at higher resolutions. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the 5950X narrowly beats the Intel 10900K with 165 frames per second compared to 155 frames per second. We see the same trend continue in CSGO with the 5950X managing a 355 frames per second lead compared to 332 frames per second. In Control, we ran two tests. The first one with ray tracing and DLSS turned on, and the second one with ray tracing and DLSS turned off. The 5950X convincingly trumps Intel's 10900K in both tests, beating Intel with an 8-15% to margin. Finally, we test Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, with the 5950X coming in at a whopping 20% faster than the Intel 10900K with 221 frames per second. Mind you, this is supposedly a content creator focused CPU and not a gaming CPU, but it seems like AMD has gone all out on this. On to creative benchmarks, the 5950X has no trouble at all here. We start off with CPU scores from 3 Mark Time Spy, with the 5950X coming in at 14,000, compared to the 11,925 from Team Blue. In 7-zip single core compression and decompression, we see the similar trend with the 5950X handily beating Intel. In Cinebench R20, AMD is the first CPU manufacturer to break the 600 score for single core benchmarks, and we see the 5950X easily crossing the mark, leaving Intel in the dust. In multi-core performance, the 5950X's additional 6 cores increases the lead by 50% over Intel's 10900K at 9839. Insane performance indeed. In V-Ray, the same ridiculous performance takes the 5950X way ahead of Intel with a score of 28,899 versus 17,863. Blender is a popular 3D modeling and rendering tool and its Blender benchmark makes it easy to compare systems. We chose the BMW 27 and Pavilion Barcelona scenes with the 5950X again easily beating Intel's 10900K. In Corona Bench, the 5950X renders the scene in 48 seconds compared to 78 seconds on the 10900K. Additionally, we all seat the 5950X to 4.5GHz on all cores to see how much more performance we could get and we were blown away. In Cinebench R20 multi-core performance, we get a staggering 19.5 improved performance just by doing some slight tweaks and a 6% improvement in Corona. Overall, we can validate AMD's claim that this is truly the best gaming and content creation CPU ever made. Finally, we measured the load on CPU alone with AMD having higher idle power consumption but on load, both CPUs are relatively similar. With AMD keeping the 5950X at the same power envelope but yet somehow managing to increase IPC significantly, we can't stress enough how impressive this CPU is. You can see for yourself how powerful this CPU is. It virtually beats the Intel 10900K flagship in both gaming and content creation. So who is the CPU for? If you are on the 1000 or 2000 series of AMD CPUs, getting a 5000 CPU is a no-brainer. Be it the 5600X, the 5800X, the 5900X or the monstrous 5950X, it's something for everyone. If you are sporting a 400 series motherboard, fret not, for certain boards are able to have their BIOS updated to accept the new 5000 series CPUs, making AMD's AM4 platform age like fine wine. This is clearly favourable to consumers who can easily pop in a new CPU without having to get a new motherboard. Kudos to AMD for keeping a relevant platform across 3 generations, the 2000 series, the 3000 series, and now the 5000 series. 
Intel, on the other hand, had forced three motherboard changes in a short span of time from the 6000 series to the 10,000 series of CPUs. If you are on an Intel platform, the new 5000 series CPUs are worth considering as well to get on board PCI Gen 4, considering that Intel's Tiger Lake will very likely require a new motherboard as well. For existing 500 series motherboards, a similarly updated BIOS will be sufficient to make use of the new CPUs. If you are currently running a 3000 series, it's not necessary to run out and buy these new CPUs right away. Always consider the nature of your use case and whether you are being bottlenecked in any way. However, for content creators and professional users, the time is money. The new 5000 CPUs um, are definitely the current best in the market. Zen 2 was a content creator's dream where it outperformed Intel CPUs in most rendering and multi-threaded workloads. However, when it came to gaming performance, it wasn't quite up there with the 10900K or even the 10700K. Generally speaking, Zen 2's gaming performance was already pretty fantastic and only a few cared about getting those additional 10 to 15 frames. AMD CPUs have become the de facto best all-round CPUs in terms of price to performance across all types of workloads. This all changes now. The point AMD is trying to make with Zentry is this. We're sick and tired of being known for the bang for buck, creator-centric, high core count but not quite there for gaming CPU company. With Zentry, AMD has finally delivered the best gaming CPUs and continue to be unchallenged in the content creation space. The ongoing fight for CPU domination culminates in Zentry and will be truly be the turning point for both companies. Back to the 5950X, it is truly the best content creation and gaming CPU in the market today. It's perfect for content creators who primarily do video editing and rendering and want to enjoy uncompromising gaming performance after a hard day at work. With multi-threaded performance far surpassing any consumer CPU and single core performance pretty much beating the Intel 10900K flagship on all games that we've tested, and in some cases, even by a large margin, the 5950X is the most exciting CPU to be launched this year. The AMD 5950X retails at $1,249 Singapore dollars, just $80 more than current gen AMD 3950X, and around $400 Singapore dollars more than the Intel 10900K if you can find it in stock. With Intel's continued 10 nanometer delays and production woes, AMD is set to dominate 2021 across all segments, and all we can say is great job, AMD. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. If you have some questions or comments, do drop your thoughts right down there in the comment section below. We enjoyed making this video for you guys and we'll catch you in the next one.